Right, so thank you for staying with us. Let's delve into the details. And we start off our show today with the question on why this election far away in the United States is of importance to Ghanaians and Africa for that matter. My colleague Paco Siasari will take us through what exactly the key diplomatic historic um, um, you know, pleasantries we've had with the US are and how we intend to build upon that plus put the relationship between the United States and Ghana in focus on the show today. So Park Sari has joined us. Let's go straight into the details and look at the historicity of Ghana and the United States of America. Park Wissi, thank you for joining us. Good uh, to be on your program, to start Martin. With, I mean, we have a very sizable number of Americans living in Ghana right. and vice versa. You inclusive, I mean, you've had a stint in the United States. So we just want to look at the diplomatic ties and the benefits thereof. Walk us through some of the key issues that uh, concern both countries. Well, first of all, Martin, I might say that this is a very big election. You know, America is a bulwark. I mean, they're yeah. the bastions of democracy. Yeah. And it's said often in times past that when America coughs, the whole world catches cold. And so this election between Donald Trump and Kamala Harris, vice president, means a lot to Africa. It has a lot of ramifications for the continent. And as you just rightly said, I'm going to start off by... Uh, giving people a brief, you know, understanding of what the di diplomatic relations have been between Ghana and the United States. Now, the U.S. established dipl diplomatic relations with Ghana in 1957. And, of course, thousands of Ghanaians uh, have studied in the United States and hundreds of American students continue to visit Ghana uh, on exchange programs. Um, in terms of security, we know the U.S. and Ghana have worked together on defense and law enforcement issues, including joint training exercises. Uh, Ghana is also a part of the state partnership program which pairs a U.S. state's national guard with a partner country's armed forces. Uh, following from that, in terms of trade, which mm. is also a major issue, we know the U.S. goods uh, exports to Ghana in 2022 were $975 million from 2021. We know that U.S. goods imports from Ghana totaled $2.8 billion in 2022. Uh, that was up by 61% from 2021 mm. and up 850 percent from 2012 we also know that the united states top exports to ghana were cars petroleum gas and refined petroleum uh if you just go to the next slide uh ghana's top exports uh due to the united states were crude petroleum cocoa beans and cocoa paste and we also know that ghana's top imports from the united states in 2023 were mineral fuels oils and distillation products machinery nuclear reactors and boilers plastics and products of animal origin. Um, so this is just a you know a brief you know you use the word historicity. Yeah, yeah that's a big word, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it just gives you a, a bit of background yeah. uh, in terms of the history of the United States and America. Now the two candidates we're talking about here, Donald Trump and uh, right. Kamala Harris, uh, depending on who wins the elections, um, their their policies might be different. Mm. Uh, we look at trade, for instance. Mm. Now Donald Trump, as you know. Um, um, when he was president, uh, dealt with countries on a bilateral level. I mean, he'll pick and choose who to deal with, mm. you know. And we know today that China is the largest trading partner to Africa. I right. mean, they are investing massively in Africa. When Donald Trump was president, we saw that rift between China and the United States. Uh, he imposed a lot of sanctions on China. Mm. And that has implications also for the countries that deal with China because... I mean, China is not looking, is not interested in who is practicing democracy or who is not. They are just coming to do business. And right. that's what they've been doing over the years. Now, America is coming in uh, with Donald Trump as president, mm. uh, trying to make African countries or countries take a stance as right. to who to belong to. And that's where the difficulty comes in, right. you know. And it, 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 it takes away from the autonomy of African countries because it's a really difficult thing to want to choose between uh, two, two superpowers, yeah. you know, and that's a, the challenge. For Kamala Harris, it almost seems as if uh, with Kamala Harris, you, you're not going to have a lot more of those geopolitical tensions. Mm. I mean, she under Biden as president, you could see the efforts that America was making, you know, trying to, although it, it's, it's late in the day, you know, but America is trying to gather itself, um, is engaging more with African countries, the green energy we know, for instance, yeah. a lot of interest in there. But whoever wins elections, the issue about critical minerals 
is a major thing for America. Absolutely. And Africa has a lot of these critical minerals, and that's where they'll be focusing on. Absolutely. Yeah. And they're also looking at building uh, and strengthening the partnerships they have with many African countries. Not every African country is a friend to the U.S. Ghana is a very key partner to the United States. Mm. That is why when we are even about having elections, the uh, secretary, um, the secretary of state right. to the current administration, mm. Anthony Blinken, mm. has given a caution, right. warning that anybody that tries to meddle in the current elections Ghana is about to have will be in the, a ban, a visa ban, will mm. be imposed on that individual. Mm. Mm. Also, it was just this year that Kamala Harris thought it necessary to come to Ghana just as a way of building or intensifying the partnership. Right, and, and that's what I talked about earlier on, with, that with Kamala US. Harris, you are you're sure of that multilateral engagement. I mean, she intends to, to, to go around visiting countries where America has interest in. Yeah. For Donald Trump, it's more bilateral to target areas where, you know, he it, it's a win-win. It's, it's very transactional, very, very transactional. Yeah. And that's Donald Trump for you. Okay, so thank you very much, Parkwisi. So for many of you who who just joined us on election 360 we've just been trying to put into perspective why we deem it necessary to discuss the u.s elections because it has very clear implications on ghana whoever goes to the oval office and just by concluding on the investment partnership between the u.s and ghana the u.s has invested an approximation of 1.3 billion U.S. dollars in Ghana. And that's the, uh, the 2022 figure, which is a 10.1% decrease from 2021. So this figure is actually a 10% a, a decline compared to what was uh, invested in 2021. So it tells you that although investments have come down, there still is huge interest between both countries. And Parkwesi, who is with our business desk, has painted a picture for us, the relevance and the need why it is important for us to keep very close eyes on what's happening in the US of A. Thank you, Parkwesi, for Thank you, that.